Hey crafty friends, this is Chelsea. Today's video we are talking unfinished projects. Quite often in my room you can probably find a stack of layouts similar to this where it's pretty much done but there is no story, there's no journaling on the pages. And a lot of times this happens because I am uh, crafting live on Zoom with my uh, customers and my VIPs and we make the Close to My Heart workshop kits together. Sometimes I switch them up, sometimes I keep them exactly the same, but often there is layout sitting around, almost completely finished, but they're missing, they're missing the story, they're missing the journaling. I have stories in mind, I just have not sat down to actually write them. Now I also have other kinds of projects in my room that are things like December Daily that needs to be finished. And uh, I'm still working on Week in the Life from last year. So there's other bigger projects like that, but you will often find things like this where I have, this is missing either a photo or a story or you know some kind of like journaling card. This one here, I have um, flip flaps. These are gonna be going into flip flaps that need to go on to here, but I also need to write the story and my plan is actually to write a bigger story and ha cut a slit in my page and have it go in behind my papers. Uh, and that takes just a little bit more work to even just sit down and write a longer story. So you will quite often find a little stack. I used to put these all away into a container, but then I had 40 layouts to sit down and write stories about. So I've been making myself leave them out so that I will sit down and do it. If you struggle with starting lots of projects but rarely complete them, make sure you keep watching because I have some great ideas to share with you. Now most recently I have this layout here. I did the Life's a Hoot workshop with my customers on Zoom and uh, this is what the original layout looks like. You can see it's completely different. We have all these circle die cuts. We have the owls there. There's fewer photos and I completely remade it. And this piece of pattern paper with the circles was actually in uh, the pack. It was left over, which doesn't usually happen. Usually the uh, packages use almost everything. There might be a few, you know, scraps or whatever left, but there's not usually a whole sheet. So I took my opportunity. I cut this into six by 12 pieces. And then I used a border thin cut here the lace border, this is a retired one, and I actually bought two of them because I cut this one so much, I wanted to have two dies that I could cut at the same time. And it cuts this beautiful lacy border. I did that out of ballerina. And then I put uh, a quarter inch by 12 inch pieces of silver glitter paper over top to cover that up. For my title, I did that on my Cricut with the Autumn in November font that Jama introduced us all to. And I cut this out of white cardstock, did an offset with grape cardstock, and that's where I intended to leave it. I was just gonna do those two layers, but when I put it on my layout, it just kind of blended in, it did not stand out enough, so I did an even bigger offset with sapphire cardstock, and that really popped it off the background. This word here, Wonderland, is from this set here, Season Greetings Winter, and I stamped it in sapphire. Now this set I had not had a chance to use yet. It came out at the end of 2022. And so I'm actually gonna use a couple of these snowmen. There's really cute like little phrases, good snowflakes. Uh, I'm gonna use these cute little guys on my page to add to my embellishment clusters. Then I pulled in another stamp set. This is the Classic Flourishes and this had made it away into my stash without ever being inked up, or maybe I used light ink, but it didn't look like I had ever touched it, which I try not to do. I try and get ink on all my stamps before they ever get put away. And I stamped it in the background with glacier ink. So you can see here, there's a variety of flourishes. There's these little like sparkle accents that I stamped around it as well. This paper in the background is a custom piece that comes in the workshop kit. And so I used that as my base, just like it showed in the original layout. And I wanted these flourishes to be on there, but not too dominant. So I used the matching color of ink for that. Then for the rest of my clusters, I used the Snowflakes Thin Cut, 
Love these ones, they're so pretty and delicate. And I cut those out of glitter paper and glacier cardstock in different sizes and just clustered those together. And then I also use the Season Greetings Winter Acrylic Pieces. So I'm mostly using the white ones here. This is, there is a nice like frosty blue in here, but I thought the white went a little bit better. You can see I have a couple of them over here and I'm going to add more once I add my little snowman. You might be wondering, why didn't I just finish up this layout? I have most of it done. Well, these little guys. So I wanted to color them up with my tri-blend markers, but I needed to sit down and figure out what colors to use. So what I came up with was True Blue Blend, True Blue Shades, and Pink Violet Blend. And I think these should be fairly close. I'm going off the colors of my daughter's mittens and her little snowsuit, as well as the paper. This just happened to all work together. Uh, this paper and the colors of her snowsuit. Uh, this was a happy accident. I was kind of excited to see how well they went together. And then I need to color these guys up. And it did take me, you know, a couple minutes just to sit down, figure out my colors. And sometimes it's little projects like this that just get shoved to the side and and then I don't come back to them or I don't come back to them for a long time when it wouldn't have taken me that long to just finish. Now, another thing, as I was sitting and looking at this, this is maybe a bonus of coming back to things. When I'm crafting live with my customers, it's a little bit more like, okay, quick decisions, we gotta go here. When I'm filming a video, I can kinda sit back and stop the video and think about it if I need to. And I don't like the shape of this uh, cluster here. I think it's kinda going off the end and I wanna bring it around into the title and make the title feel a little bit more a part of this cluster. I felt like there's a hole right here, like there should have been something more. So I cut another one of those snowflakes from the Glacier cardstock, and I'm just gonna kind of wedge it back here. Let's see. Something like that. And see how that just fills in that hole, makes this cluster a little bit bigger, but also makes this feel, the title feel like it's all connected. It's all one piece. Instead of kind of being like long and skinny, it's a little bit more big and rounded. Now for these little snowmen, I'll show you where they're going once they're colored. I'm gonna put one of them here, I'm gonna put the other one here, and then I'm going to layer over some acrylic snowflakes. Now I think maybe I want Hmm, I'm not sure which one I want where. Maybe that one there and that one there, just to tie in all the elements in all the three clusters. So I'm gonna start coloring and I'll bring you in a little bit closer. Now I did end up starting to color before I actually hit record, but don't worry, I'll walk you through the steps here as we color a different part of the snowman. I am starting with the white parts. I just wanna add some blue as some shadow and leave the center or part of the snow part white. And that way I don't have to color the whole thing and it will still look quite bright. So you can see I'm taking the true blue blend in the lightest shade and adding my deepest shadow. And then I'm using a Copic marker B0000, very light blue to blend that out. And then just going over it with my colorless blender just to smooth everything out and let it fade into that white. Now I realized that I needed some orange so I grabbed the burnt orange blend and I'm just using the medium and the lightest shade for the little carrot nose. There's not a lot of room to blend on here. Next I'm going to grab the true blue shades marker and use that for part of the hat and the scarf and then I'll also use some of the pink violet blend on the hat. So while I continue to color here, I want to chat with you a little bit about what we can do to finish our projects. So I think the first step is to identify roadblocks. Why are you not finishing it? And sometimes this takes a little bit of sitting down and reflecting and just kind of thinking about your process and what's hanging you up on a particular project. For me, sometimes it's just having the time. Maybe it's a really big project and it's overwhelming and I know I need a big chunk of time to really get into it and figure it out and work on it. And so then I'm just putting it off. Something else that can keep me from finishing my projects is interruptions. 
I like to have a chunk of time where I can really get into a project, get in that creative flow state, and then things just come a lot easier. And if I'm constantly being interrupted, I find it really difficult and it slows me down. And then I kind of lose motivation to finish what I'm working on. Sometimes I also just lose interest, right? You start out with this project that's super exciting and you're really into it, but then, you know, time goes by and you're like, you know what, this really isn't how I thought it was going to be, or I'm just not motivated to finish it. Could also be I'm stuck on a certain task. So like this layout that I'm working on in this video, I was going right along, I was finishing the layout, and then I hit the little roadblock of needing to pick out my marker colors, sit down, figure out where my shadows are going, color my image, and that was just enough to hang me up and let me put off finishing this layout for a couple of weeks. Now, once you've identified what your roadblocks are, what is stopping you from completing your projects, now it's time to come up with some solutions. So here are some things that I have tried and different things work for different projects and also for different people. So hopefully you'll find something here that resonates with you. You can schedule blocks of time to work on either a certain project or a certain task in that project. So maybe you need to actually put it in your calendar. Uh, maybe you need to arrange childcare for this time. Maybe you need to uh, put your phone on do not disturb so you're not distracted by texts or phone calls or anything. Just need that quiet time where you can focus on it. Maybe like with my stack of layouts that need journaling, you have to keep it in front of you. If it's put away, you just forget about it or you move on to something that's more exciting. So for me, having my layouts out on my table as visual clutter makes me annoyed enough to sit down and do the journaling. It might take me a couple months, but I do get there. Now you might also be the kind of person who works better if you're accountable to somebody or you have a buddy who is working on the same project as you or is just checking in with you and be like, hey, how's that project going? Maybe if you have that outside person uh, to sort of you know go back and forth with, it'll help you continue on and it'll give you that extra motivation to finish your project. Some people really like deadlines, so maybe you need a deadline of a certain date to either be finished the whole project or break it down in smaller chunks and deadlines for kind of each step of the project. Now I'm sure there's probably other strategies to help you finish projects. These are the ones that either I have used or that came to mind when I was sitting and thinking about this. But if you have something that works for you and that helps you get things completed, please share that in the comments below because it might help some other people who are going through the comments and getting some ideas. And you know what? Sometimes life truly does get in the way and we just have to give ourselves grace and be like, I will come back to that right now is the season in my life where it's just not possible and that does happen and sometimes you have to know when to let a project go i've been there too where i'm like you know what this isn't as important anymore i'm gonna let it go well we have finished the coloring portion and now i am going ahead and adhering these pieces down to my page so i love how these clusters came together i was inspired by my friend jama she did a really fun winter layout where she had a bunch of stamped images clustered plus some die cuts. And so I took that idea and added some stamping to the background of the clusters. And I absolutely love how they came together. Stamps are such a versatile and awesome way to embellish your pages. I know a lot of people think of stamping as like a card making thing, but I love stamping on my pages. I actually just posted a video recently where I showed a bunch of different ways with examples of how to use stamps on your scrapbook pages. Uh, if you are looking for more stamps, maybe you're not a really big stamper, Close to My Heart is having a big stamp sale all month long in March. So we're getting to the end of it here, March, 2023. So if you're watching this in real time, I'll leave the link below so you can go check it out. And I will also link below all the other supplies I've used on these pages. 
Since I have committed to finishing this layout in this video, I'm also gonna do the journaling. So I'm using my T ruler and a pencil and just creating journaling lines on my background for myself. And then I typed out my journaling on my computer just to you know, think through what I wanted to say and make sure everything was spelled correctly. And then I'm using my black Le pen. I love these pens to write out all my journaling. Now, after that's dry, they don't take too long to dry. Uh, then I go back with a white eraser and erase all those lines. Now here is a closer look at these pages. I'm so happy with how they turned out. These are basically just some everyday photos of my daughter. We were playing in the backyard and uh, instead of building a snowman, she wanted to build a snow castle. So that's what we did. And then she proceeded to dance around it and sing and slide down it. And we just had a really fun time. I love capturing these everyday moments uh, because they are the things that stick out in my mind. So now I have this stack of layouts that is sitting here waiting for some journaling. So I'm gonna go off camera and do that right now so that it is done. And I encourage you to grab your most recent unfinished project and sit down and finish it. If you'd like some more layout inspiration, click this playlist on the screen. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.